So <clears throat> if I throw, I don't know, an airplane, <laughs> a paper airplane, then which row is going to you catch it? <clears throat> okay, now answer a question over here. Yes. Sorry, uh, sorry, can you repeat that? I, if I throw a, a paper airplane, row number four is going to catch it. Then row number four, I have to make it a little bigger so we can see because people are saying anything over there. They don't see the small four up there. So let me just go to draw and do 72 in here and put over here four. So this is row number four. Okay. <clears throat> now my question is, let's say, <clears throat> let's say I remove this and I remove this one. And what I do over here is this. I'm going to make this one soccer and make this one ball. Okay? So, <clears throat> first row ball, second basketball, third soccer ball for anything. <clears throat> if I throw um, a stone, if I throw a stone, who's going to catch it? Which row is going to catch it? A stone. Now, if I throw a soccer ball, which row is going to catch it? Soccer ball. See, so half of you fell for it. Take a look at take a look at the poll over there. Half of you said, uh, more actually, fifty three percent said three. A soccer ball is a ball. I ordered the lines badly because I ordered the balls bad that the lines badly when I throw the ball row first row is going to catch it okay do you do, do we understand what just happened oh no sorry do we understand what just happened okay good oh somebody said no somebody said no who said no I I, I, I uh, uh, removed it by mistake who said no Oh, that was just me. Sorry, I, I was just distracted there for a second. Okay, and you that. know what happened, right? So if I throw a ball, nobody's going to catch it by one. It doesn't matter if it's a baseball or a soccer ball because first row is going to catch any ball, right? Okay. So I okay. to play this game, I, or, I ordered these things incorrectly, okay? Right. So does anybody have any question about what just happened, something that is not clear? Any question? So, ladies and gentlemen, I just taught you exception handling. What you just see over here, what you just saw, is called exception handling in any language. Jose? Jose? Sorry, right. sorry, right. I missed you. You're okay? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so, so, that's that one. So, I'm just going to clear this. And I'm going to show you what do I mean when I say, now you know exception handling. So exception handling, ladies and gentlemen, is essentially procrastinating in validating your application. What it means is, with exception handling, you can actually uh, throw stuff, write code to catch it, or uh, uh, let it pass through. If it passes through, you're going to have an exception uh, thrown. So well, let's see what happens. Take a look. I just wrote a code for you that explains everything. Take a look at this one. So I, first of all, any throw that you see, remember this thing that, uh, uh, that we did over here. Then I'm, the first person tries to throw a ball. The first person, uh, the first thing tries to throw the ball. Let me just fix these. So the first person in here tries to throw the ball, and we have series of catchers over here standing. Okay? What is thrown is called an exception. The person who's throwing your ball could be any C++ code, but it has to be in a try area. So this person has to try to throw something. And the catchers stand right after where it's being tried. So 
if I look at what I've done over here, take a look. So I have a I have a for loop. In this for loop, I'm going to say start from zero, go down to th three, go down to three, and in a try statement, as you see, I am throwing three, three different things. I am throwing a D that is a double. I am throwing a string that is a, that str that is a that is a character pointer. I am throwing a an integer that is an integer i that is an integer and right after the try statements i have series of catch now let's walk through it so when you walk through this is what happens when the program is running it comes over here the try statement brings starts so as soon as you start trying it means something is going to get thrown in here now i'm saying if i is equal to zero throw so it's going to say throw d D's type is double. Therefore, who's going to catch it? The row that it is receiving a double. Therefore, that D that is thrown comp goes over everybody's head and comes right to that double that is over there and sits right over there. Therefore, DE becomes 4, as you see, because D was 4. And it prints double, double D4, as you see that. Okay? Then we go out, so all the other catches were, are ignored. It comes up. Again, I'm going to try. This time, I is 1. I am throwing a character pointer. The closest match is a constant character pointer. Therefore, uh, the first one will completely ignore it, and it passes through that one and goes right to S. So S will essentially hold what SDR is holding, that is address of hoo hoo. Therefore, hoo hoo is going to get printed. My apologies. Let me shut this thing down. My apologies. There you go. Okay, so the second one is Hilhu. Then it's got to get received over there. And then what happens the next one? We go down the loop again. Now it comes over here. Now i is 3. It comes, passes those two. It throws an integer. Because it throws an in integer, nothing is going to receive it because I did not have a catch for an integer. Therefore, it goes to the one that I put at the end. So essentially, if you put three dots in your catch, what you mean is essentially line number 4, which means anything. Anything is thrown, come over here. You have no way to know what it is because you don't have anything in here. So, so you, because, because you don't know what is a type that you're receiving, therefore, it's going to be something else. We don't know what it is. It's an exception that we do not know what it is. And, it, and that's called something else and program ends. So do we understand the syntax of exceptions? So now to see how exceptions are actually used, I'm going to give you an example <clears throat> with the smart integer again. And this time, so let me just put this one over here as exceptions. So <clears throat> exceptions. Add. Uh, not that add. This add. Add. Seriously? Add. What's going on here? Oh, something is being executed. <clears throat> That's why. Solution Explorer. Sorry. Add. Existing project. Let me go for the exception. So now, I want you to pay, pay close attention. What I'm going to do over here is this. I'm going to create in my validation.h, I'm going to create series of in related classes. The relationship for me is actually the exceptions they're going to throw. So I'm going to create a class called bad ex uh, <coughs> I'm going to create a class called bad exception that is a child of the exception from uh, uh, standard library. Okay, so the std exception is a 
mother of all exceptions. Okay, so I'm going to say bad integer exception is a child of exception, and it has a string. Oh, we do not have, we don't know, uh, we don't know what inheritance is yet. Oh yeah, sorry, 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 we know. For a second I thought I'm teaching OP244. <laughs> My brain is playing tricks on <laughs> me. I hate teaching OP244 and 345 together. My apologies. So, bad exception that I have is a child of exception. And then I have a too young exception that is a pup that is a, a child of bad exception. And I have a too old exception that is a child of bad exception again. And I have a bad mark over here that is a child of bad integer exception. And these are just, for me, I'm just, it's like I am, when you look at like, I know that physically they are different, but when you look at a, like if, if you are throwing a ball, how how can somebody recognize if it's a soccer ball or a volleyball? When you look at it, when they're when it's in the air, they're all the same. But soccer balls usually have those black and white thingies, and volleyball is usually all solid in one one color, and so on and so forth. So, so something like that, right? So, <clears throat> in here, I'm just having a class, and I'm painting it differently with different colors. So what happens is this: when actually I am calling. Uh, the integer thingy with all the validation stuff that I have and as you see over here I have a class validation over here and valid ages uh, so I have my functors and everything which is very fine so what I happens over here is this when I'm writing over here I'm gonna uh, what I'm gonna do in here is this in my read function let me see if I can actually uh, in my functors take a look where are my functors? Uh, validation.h, validation.cpp. In my functors, instead of actually handling what I am actually doing is this. Uh, what is uh, the problem? This is what I'm going to do. In my functors, I'm not going to fix anything. I'm not going to do a loop. I'm not going to write anything. Only I'm going to check to see if... So the functor that I have for... Uh, um, the functor that I have for valid age, I am checking to see if validation is less than, if the value is less than 19, then I'm going to say throw too young expression, uh, exception. If the value that I have is more than 100, I'm going to throw too old exception. When I'm doing mark, if the mark is not between 0 and 100, I'm going to throw bad mark exception. So my functors won't return true or false of any kind. They're just going to throw different types of exceptions. Okay? So now in my program, when I'm actually reading it, I know that my C in is going to throw some kind of an exception. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say enter your age, and I'm going to say C in age, okay is true. Then I'm going to say catch, too young exception this, catch, too old exception that, catch, bad int exception this, and this one that you see is mother of all exceptions that I have. And at the end, I can actually have a catch, three dots, and put something like, see out uh, unknown exception which means this exception is is not even known to C++ okay and in here I'm gonna say yeah again exit minus one because it's a very bad thing that happened okay so <clears throat> now when I actually start reading the mark uh, the the uh, the age so when I actually run the program oh I have to set it as startup Give me a second. Stop, 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 stop. Set it as startup. So when I run the program, everything set up, it comes over here, it says get the age. Now in here, I'm going to put 10. And as soon as I put, uh, let me just do something else. Stop. So one more time, I'm going to go F11, so it goes over here, it does get, get comes over here and says 
get the value so ice stream is going to get the value now i'm going to put over here 10 and hit enter okay so uh, it's going to try to call the validation of the functor so it goes to the validation of the functor it is less than 19 as you see it throws too young expression as soon as i do that it directly jumps out of everything and goes where i'm catching too young. so all the other stuff that are done after okay being set to true or if i have anything in here printed after that all will be ignored and it jumps right towards the expression and i'm going to say e what so e what essentially tells what is the uh, uh, the type of exception and in here i am actually setting it so i'm saying m message so return m message that's going to be it and uh, i'm just setting it so m message actually tells me what is the message of the of the uh, uh, exception so so it's going to tell me what is the message and it comes out and it tells me too young to drink try again it comes over here because it's not okay it goes back up now i'm going to say enter your age go back in here and now in here i'm going to put abc and hit enter this time bad integer will be thrown and it's going to continue like that so you see how it happens every function every every statement any any statement statement that throws an exception must be in a try statement if it's not you're going to get an unhandled exception and program terminates and that's that so this is exceptions go through it walk through it and see how it works um, uh, many companies don't like it because it's a huge jump and uh, um, uh, walking through and debugging the code becomes difficult other companies love it because it separates the business logic from the error handling logic if you see over here in this validation i'm not doing anything or in 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 here i'm in in this part i'm writing the best scenario which is enter your age and age is entered correctly so the business logic is always linear and i don't have any if statements or anything and anything goes wrong it's going to be thrown and dealt with it later so many companies love it and many companies don't so it all depends uh, where you use exception handling but that's how it is done any questions yeah for example if you are doing try and catch okay if you are doing try uh, if you are doing new and you're not happy with new returning null you can actually add include new as a header file and try new and then catch bad memory allocation exception something like that so so you can actually do your me memory allocation instead of returning null you can actually throw exceptions so uh, it's written in both ways that you can actually use um, uh, any questions All right, so that is everything for today. I'm just going to post uh, the um, uh, recording from last time that I promised that I will. Meanwhile, if you have any questions, please fire away. I am standing right over here waiting to help. Brother Demir, I'm yours. Go ahead. Uh, for that, uh, another question about workshop. Okay. Mm. So in uh, child uh, module, uh, we uh, over um, we overload um, insertion operator. Okay. And uh, it says that it's not use... insertion operator. In child, you are not overloading insertion operator. You are over overloading left shift up left shift operator. Insert insertion operator is for C. Out. Are you overloading C out? Yeah out are you let me see if, if it is true it says, so you're essentially uh, overload, overload insertion operator to insert the content of child object into o stream object. oh okay my apologies then they well, sorry 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 no worries again different so thing. it says that use uh let me read how it, um 
this operator should use a local function variable to count how many times this operator operator has been called. Okay. So that means that you should use variable inside the function and count how many. Yeah, you can use a static variable. Yeah. yeah, that's that's the thing that it's not a local, right? It's global, but it says the local. No, static is local. It's not global. But it lives throughout the. Uh, like... You can put a static function in a static variable inside the function. Yes, it and it's local it... to the variable to the to the to the to the function. It's not global. It, it's it's local to the function, but it's. It, it it doesn't die when yeah the... lifetime is lifetime of the thing but its visibility okay. is glow it's not global it's very yeah, okay. local yeah, yeah it has a scope visibility yeah okay therefore That's... it's local Statics... so actually I use the static but I I, I didn't know if it's right static it's is that... it's, it static essentially is literally the definition of something local like if like all the uh, like internal linkages are all static we literally call it internal linkage, right? Yeah. External linkages are extern, opposite of static. Correct? Yeah. There we go. So that's the terminology. Rohan, hey. you had a question. Is, is that a, is that the only one or you have more questions, Vladimir? No, I'm okay. Thank okay. You. Rohan, you had a question? Rohan? Rohan, you have to tell me actually how to pronounce your name. I had one student that it told me to, to tell Rohan. I had another one. It was Rohan. So how do I uh, pronounce your name? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, okay. There you go. Uh, I guess it's Rohan. Rohan. Okay, good. All right. Um, I had a question about Workshop 5, if that's okay. Workshop 5. I haven't even looked at it yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I haven't looked at it. I'm sorry. I, I have to look uh, at it okay. and then. So what is the question? Tell me. <laughs> um, pretty much one of the parts is like we overload the parentheses operator for the job module. Is it uh, uh, part one or two? Uh, part one. Okay. So for job module, you are overloading what? The parentheses operator. Uh, you're talking about functor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you get the... Um, yeah. Then it says... Uh, our if something goes like one of the error cases that if there's no remaining work uh or sorry if the remaining work is less than the, the value that you pass to it mm -hmm. you have to report an underflow error to the caller yes uh, i was a little confused by the wording of this so does that mean we put the entire logic in a try statement no then... no see the one no. who throws doesn't care about try okay you throw so whoever is calling your function must place it in a try. Okay, so we don't put that inside. That no, actual... no, no, okay, no, no. Okay. You only see that's the that's the whole beauty of exception ex, exception programming is that you procrastinate in your error handling. Okay. You simply write your code and say, I don't know how to handle it. I'm gonna throw an exception. Whoever calls it is gonna handle the exception. It's not me. Okay. Got it. So we just put it like a if statement and then if that so you put an if statement if your whatever it is less than whatever it is you do whatever you are doing and then you throw std underflow underline error and inside of it you pass a string with uh the information required okay that yeah, you're supposed you. to pass are we good yeah perfect all right so i did know what the answer is without knowing what the what the workshop is <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody else have a question? Let me know. I'm just fixed. I'm just posting the the recording from last day. So, all right. So it's. I think it was February tenth. Uh, functions. Functions. We didn't talk about exceptions at all. So, and here's the video. I don't know. Somebody asked that if the video is up there or not. So here's the video. It's posted now. And I'm going to post the notes for today. And your um, test begins in. Uh, your quiz begins in. In. Uh,
seven minutes. Let me pause.